Moving on to our next hot topic, which is definitely related. And uh, as I was saying previously, we had a great segue there from that last conversation. And it's um, given the NFL's history with black players, whenever any kind of domestic dispute arises, right? We got Ray Rice and et cetera. Do you feel that the NFL handle this Chad Wheeler situation appropriately. I threw it to Mr. PAT for the first question. So I'm gonna start with you this time, E-Man. What say you? So, so first things first, I never knew so much about Chad. I didn't know who the guy was. I'm gonna just start, I'm gonna put that <laughs> right. out front. I, I'm not even gonna lie, I didn't know who he was. So they say right. he played for the Seattle, for the Seattle Seahawks. So I was mm-hmm. like, what position this fool plays? You know, mm-hmm. you know, I found out he was an offensive lineman. I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's one of those unsung guys who just, you know, blocks and just don't get talked about. So, so I'm not sure because I haven't followed the story that well, but I, what I picked up and read about that, you know, he's no longer playing for the Seahawks at the moment right now. Um, and I don't know how long that's going to be. I'm not too sure if he's going to really get back into the NFL, but a fellow NFL player goes by the name of Richie Incognito, you know, who also did some of the, not some of the similar similar things, but he did say uh, supposedly a, a a a a a (laughs) he said a slur that he's not supposed to say to, seems like to a black player. And, you know, it. there was some type of, you know, you know, it got a little heated, you know, and it got a little rough and and it cost him his job. But somehow, some way, Richie Incognito got back into the NFL, you know. So when I'm looking at this Chad Wheeler situation, you know, um, it looks like, you know, somehow, some way he's going to get back into the NFL, you know. Um, they did it with Ben Roethlisberger also, too. You know, um, his gesture was more of a sexual harassment one. But at the end of the day, Ben Roethlisberger still plays in the NFL, you know. So, you know, did they handle it in a way that they chose to handle it? Yes. Do I feel what they did was right? No. Do I feel that the NFL is going to kick him out of the league? I doubt it because based upon their history, the many, you know, I don't like to use the term white, but, you know, their white counterpart players have basically, you know, done something has come back. Other than sense, you know, other black players, some have come back, some has been in jail. You know, the one that's really hasn't come back from is basically the Ray Rice situation. I feel like Ray Rice should be playing in the NFL. You know, um, they let Michael Vick come back and he didn't harm, you know, he didn't harm, you know, a human being, even though he harmed an animal, you know, and he had to go through the proper steps, you know, to get the respect. But in my eyes, you know, Michael Vick didn't harm any animals. It was basically... Based upon the stories I read about that he situation, was overseeing where, it. Yeah, yeah, they said he was overseeing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But me going off topic, but I'm just saying as you know, there's just been you know the history that's out there that's given to us, and you see the same patterns going over and over again. You know, I feel bad that another woman had to get abused by another man, but. It's hard to know other people's situations when you're, you don't really know what actually is going on, you know? So I don't know what took them to that level. I can't speak on that, but, you know, there's always that, that, that gray line and whatnot. So. They're claiming mental illness. They're claiming that, and, and this is a, I'll get into this a little later when it's my turn, but they're claiming mental illness drove them to that. 
it's funny you say that because they did the same thing with Brandon Marshall when he hit his wife, I supposedly. They said that he had a split personality and supposedly he went through the proper steps. He didn't lose his NFL job. He actually got a chance to be in the NFL. Um, not as long, but, you know, he played a good 15 seasons in the NFL, which I found that was pretty shocking. He played with one, played with one of my favorite teams, but it was really interesting that, you know, when you scream mental illness with those who don't, not mental ill, but, you know, everyone wants to use that term very loosely. And I feel that is where, and it's, I wouldn't say it's hard to say this word, but it seems like, you know, this is the coping word or the, the word that they have to use to draw another narrative to keep you know, you know, that player that could be valuable to that franchise or that player to make sure that, you know, his life's not in danger per se. Sure, understood. Okay, definitely fair point. Mr. P.A.T., what say you? <laughs> um, <laughs> so just just to um, make sure I got the, the question right. So it's about, um, I guess, are the um, is the NFL approaching um, the Chad Wheeler situation um, differently, appropriately, mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on his his race, as opposed to um, I guess another like another player that's black, um, or or is just or you're just asking, are they approaching it appropriate appropriately? Well, so given the NFL's previous um, their their prior history with black players right okay, when the okay. Ray Rice incident occurred right. and etc and how they reacted to that do you feel that their response to this Chad Wheeler situation was appropriate you know considering a lot of folks felt like it take it took a while for the NFL to react right yeah um, so what are your thoughts on on their the way they handled it um well I'll I'll and I'll keep it real I don't know the um I guess um, the behind the scenes of, I guess how they're handling it. I know they made a statement, um, but what I will say is um, just how I guess this whole thing with Chad Wheeler is handled, um, whether it be through the NFL, through the media, um, basically through the machine. I would say um it is i think it is different um they're handling it a little bit different from the ray rice situation and i'm just using that as an mm -hmm. example because i mean mm -hmm. that was abuse also where um mm -hmm. abusing a woman um now i will say i will say that you know with ray rice i mean his was recorded you know so we saw what happened we saw that take place right and, um, absolutely he does have a he ha he has a bigger name he has a bigger um he, he has bigger name recognition because mm -hmm. the thing is, even though I don't follow football, like I don't follow the NFL, I still mm -hmm. know who certain players are. Like sure. I'm still aware of who certain people are. Like I, I've always known who Tom Brady is, you know, Mike, Michael Vick, like certain people stand out and you know them whether you watch, watch NFL or not, you know. But Chad Wheeler, I'd never even heard of this dude. Like I didn't hear about him until this incident came up. So I could, I could you know, say that maybe they're not, pressing too hard on it because it I guess it it, it it doesn't make as big of a headline as like let's say like a Ray Rice or a Mike Vick or whoever else is is, is a little bit more popular um mm -hmm. but I will say um there's there's always a racial component to it um you know it, it it's it's a white guy um and you know even though he's he's I guess relatively unknown or he was um I feel like there's still like um, kind of a a sympathetic type of slant to to um, this whole Absolutely. thing, especially with the whole mental illness thing. Mm -hmm. Because if you notice, um, every time that that term gets thrown out, and I, honestly, I, I get sick of it. Like I just hearing about it, mm -hmm. you know, because I feel like it just gets thrown around out there. But yeah. um, you know, when it's a black player, you don't really hear about mental illness. Mm -hmm. you know they're called all kinds of names and you know that it's right. like the black man's the devil pretty much but let exactly. it be a white person that does it a white man that does it 
you know, oh, you know, well, you know, he had mental illness and, you know, it's like they'll acknowledge what he did, but they're still going to throw that mental illness thing in there just to kind of, I guess, soften it up a little bit, say, well, you know, he he had these kind of issues growing up and he didn't take his meds. And, you know, it's like they try to they, they create a different narrative, basically. You know, um, the, the white the white person, the white player will always it, it seems like they just get a different narrative. Um, mm-hmm. So in, in yeah. regards to that, I think the NFL, I guess they're they're going pretty light on this because um, I think just because of the lack of the name recognition, it, you know, it, it's, it's not going to really make headlines. I, I guess they did what they had to do. I mean, he I'm a, I guess he left. I mean, Chad Wheeler left the NFL. Um, I'm, yeah, the but, Seahawks, they uh, they cut him off the team. OK, yeah. so they cut him yeah, off the really. team. So, I mean, yeah, they they did that and that's fine. But um, I'm going to what I'm going to look at is, um, you know, how they bring him back in, because I, I feel like honestly, something like that, something like what he did, really a player should be banned for life. And it's not even about race in that regard. It could be a black person, white person, Latino, Asian, no matter. You know, once you do that to, to a woman, when, like you just need to be banned. You know, because that's yeah. pretty much what he did was like that's attempted murder. You know, right. so well he's technically the charges that were brought against him are arrested on suspicion of felony domestic violence, and um, you know I think oh, repeat he, that again. Repeat yes, that again. he was arrested on suspicion. <laughs> Keep right there, suspicion of felony domestic violence. Hmm. The, the key uh, word is suspicion right there. The exactly right. Arrested <laughs> on suspicion of domestic violence. And 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 Pat, if you're done, what I was you you raised some very good points. And and my first, I want to start off <laughs> before I give my view on this by saying I 100 percent support folks who are going through anything in life and are suffering from mental illness where they feel that they need to, you know, seek help um, or, you know, it, it, it's nothing to be ashamed of. As human beings, right. especially in Black culture, there is this stigma, of, you know, for especially for Black men at that, that, you know, I can't, I can't, you um, um, profess that I have a mental illness or I can't speak out about it because I'm weak if I do that, you know, something we got to fix in our culture, but I digress. With no that being said, I think in this particular case, it was very interesting how quickly that mental illness that he has been suffering from was added to this story. You know, mm. you heard the, the, the day the story launched, it's, you know, Chad Wheeler um, being accused of domestic violence. That was the first that was the first headline that I heard. Right. right. It was maybe not even 24 hours later, Chad Wheeler suffering from mental mental illness, you know, uh, accused of abusing his live in girlfriend. It, it, it felt to me like there wasn't even any significant amount of investigation that was done before the mental illness label was added to this story. And I can't help but suspect I know why, gentlemen. <laughs> because, I mean, you know, I, ahead, sorry to cut ahead, you off, ahead, man. but I can't take you seriously when first, you know, they say this, then we got another article stating of he's being charged of suspicion. Yeah, you know I don't saying? I don't like that suspicion word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. It's That's key what I words like. they use to yeah. throw people off. Yep. yep. If, if if you would go find the etymology of suspicion, which I'm going to do after, you know, you know, Miss Nia Angel finished, you know, mm-hmm. her thought, but just that word alone just proves that he didn't do it. Just that word alone. Just just by what the art of just the word suspicion. And I'm still laughing about it because the word suspicion is in there. 
You know, mm -hmm. you know, right. how you say yeah. 24 hours, you know, he abused a woman. A few hours later, you know, mental illness. A few days yeah. later, oh, now it's a suspicion now. So now we just thought he did this, you know? So Right, right, <laughs> right, right. And to, yeah. to really, to quickly add on to that, you know, the just like you said, the key words. And when I read these articles, when I read headlines, I always look at the words they use. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, if I'm telling you right now, you know, of course I can't, um, you know, unequivocally, you know, I, I can't, I can't like, you know, say, oh, well, I, I know this for a fact, but I'm telling you right now, I, I know that if that was a, a black player Absolutely. in that position, there would be no suspicion. There would be no mm -hmm. accused, it, you know, it would be, he abused his, his girlfriend or his wife. Flat right. Out. Absolutely. Like, you know, the fact that he, that he even threw in suspicion, it, it's leaving that, that, um, it's like kind of giving the benefit of the doubt, like, like, did this really happen? But the thing is, yeah. his girl, like, if you if you seen the picture of her on social media, mm -hmm. it's like, come on, man, like, let's be real here. Like, he, I, you know, I don't think she she would just make that up. You know, I don't, you know. Yeah, and, for me, it's it it's it's a matter of look. This approach for this individual was way different than previous approaches for other athletes right and and mm -hmm. like I said what I alluded to earlier was I think I know why I know I know why <laughs> we're talking about a white NFL player okay he is less than 24 hours after being accused he is now this terribly disturbed mental ill person who they are suspicious of committing an act of domestic violence I mean it's bullshit yeah. <laughs> that it's just that simple yeah, if this simple. were a black I, I don't recall the terminology suspicion being used in the Ray Rice case at any point of it certainly not 24 hours after the accusation occurred you know there's absolutely no reason in my opinion and this is my stance on the uh, the, the question of given the NFL's history with black players, did they handle this Chad Wheeler situation appropriately? Absolutely. And, and I know that's shocking, but I'm gonna tell you why. They handled it appropriately as far as taking the time to review and investigate the evidence, which they did not do with the Ray Rice situation. Ray Rice was shunned the moment that announcement was made by the media, the moment that story broke. Right. The NFL didn't take the appropriate time to investigate and review it. And although there was a video, it was not the video was not immediately released because it was considered evidence in that case. Mm. They should have taken the time to appropriately get all the facts and et cetera, but they didn't. And they didn't because we were talking about a black athlete with a big name who was making a splash for something negative against the league. A white athlete with no name, like you all said, we didn't know who Chad Wheeler was before this situation. And E-Man and I are, are you know, fairly into sports. Um, this is clear to me. They said, okay, they, I don't think there's a dispute that he actually physically put his hand on this woman, but how do we control this? How do we control the perspective that the, the, the world is going to get, especially since this is a white athlete? Yep, yep. Let's throw in mental illness. Let's throw in suspicions. Bada bing, bada boom. Anyone who questions it, you know, when you're talking about someone with a mental illness, now you're a horrible person. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, it all boils down to, um, you know, it's about protecting whiteness. And this goes mm -hmm. further than sports. And it's just a, on a societal level, you know, because um, we hear the mental illness thing even outside of, um, incidents that happen within the sports arena and um, you know it, it's about protecting the image of whiteness even when they do something you know when they do something crazy something heinous 
Yeah, they're they're gonna they're gonna give they're gonna you know speak on what happened. You know, they're gonna give the news as they you know as they say they do, but they're still gonna find a way, just like you said, to to um you know they're gonna they're gonna find a way to spin it and you know try to figure out how to how to you know tweak the narrative up to kind of still protect that that white individual to still somewhat you know give them a little sob story so to speak um you know because like like i said before uh if it if it was a black man typically black men don't get that you know it's we we did it like we are guilty before pr proven innocent on the flip side a white person does it a white man does it white woman whoever they're innocent until proven guilty so it's always that 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 switch that goes on so you know that that's how i see it that's a very interesting uh, perspective right there uh pat because um and the reason why i'm saying this is because you know i've been trying to really study like law you know in when I mean by studying law, I, I like the system that we're in, like the system that we're all part of, you know, has rules, regulations, and laws, you know? Correct. You Correct. know, and these laws are basically bills, you know, that they create and everything. So they basically tell us you can't do this because it is the law. Mm -hmm. And then your police officer is basically the enforcer of the law. As you see, you know, many police are not all, but they enforce the law that's not even the law, you know? Mm -hmm. So it even goes back to the sense of like, if we don't know law, because remember, this is a corporation, whether anybody hates it or not, you know, they created this for their survival, all right? Because if they didn't create this, where did it come from, you know? And that's why when you look at the NFL, you know, we can say all this, that, and the third, but in a shout out of doubt that, you know, a lot of NFL owners based upon stories, articles, interviews, it even goes to the NBA too, that a lot of them are biased and very discriminate. You know, I can't speak totally on. Agree. I can't speak on their racism because the simple fact is they have to put up what they have by meaning that we have basically a bunch of players who are all different creeds. You know, I have to put up with them because this is how my money is being cut and whatnot. Rather they like it or not, that's how their money is cut. You can't change anyone's perspective unless they choose to change it, you know? It goes back even the sense of like that chick and the whole Donald Sterling thing and whatnot. It's almost, it's almost, it's almost like we have basically different situations where we come back to the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and now coming back to all this, you know, you know, we talking about a guy who's not even a skill player, you know, he is a game change because he does one thing, he guards the QB, you know, you know, but that's basically like he doesn't get huge accolades for the things that he does at his position, but it's extremely extremely crazy to see the steps that's about to happen with chad wheeler like i'm waiting so much to the point that in my mind i feel like they're gonna go he's gonna go back into the nfl that's 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 what's what i got mm -hmm. going on right now and mm -hmm. that's not gonna change at all well you know? i say he shouldn't be in the nfl because of his skill set <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he should be. I don't think he should be in the NFL. But you know what I'm saying? I don't make that call. Roger Cadell makes that call. You know what sure, I'm saying? Sure. And 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 it's and and this is another thing. You know, a lot of the players even said because you know, there's a lot of um because I actually I met an NFL player before, 
and I had a chance to work with one, um, an ex NFL player, really good guy. And um, just by going on towards the many things and whatnot that, you know, what many of these players might, you know, go through, you know, like daily, like sometimes it is basically a setup and whatnot, you know, and a lot of things I tell people don't make sense when it comes to the NFL, you know, every, from every situation, not just with Chad Wheeler, but every other situation that's going on and whatnot, you know, and I don't want to go back to the whole Tom Brady thing, but supposedly, you know, during the Super Bowl, they said Tom Brady said, you know, a dirty slur to a black player, supposedly, but then that narrative got switched to be like, oh no, Tom didn't say that and whatnot. You see? Like, like what it's like it's recording. all these things. I want to say that there was a recording though that proved that he didn't say it. I want to say that the I reason saw an why. article, his microphone was on. And that's the reason why. It. You see? And and these and these are the and this, and that's what I'm saying. These are the little things, just like how we talked about the word suspect, which I just found out what that word means, like the, the origin of the word suspect or suspicion, you know, it means basically distrust, all right, and into mistrust and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're basically stating that, you know, that they don't even know what he actually did and whatnot. So they don't even know if he, if he, if we're he. You're talking about he, Chad now? Yeah, we're talking about Chad. Mm -hmm. I apologize. No, but you're yeah. fine. Just making sure, you know, we're clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, they don't even know if he did abuse her. Mm -hmm. They don't even know how he did it. Mm -hmm. They don't even know what he actually used or like there's no, there's nothing in these stories that anybody's even sharing or at least grabbing towards what's even on paper. Like they don't even know how he did it, you know? But she when gave an eyewitness, I mean, not an eyewitness cause she was the victim, but you know, to a certain extent, a victim's account should be enough. And this speaks to the point that I was making previously with, with Ray Rice, they were quick to get that man you know, out of the league and to get this situation to, to show people, hey, we're doing something about this. We're not simply accepting this. You know right. what I mean? And and yeah, they were quick true. to do that. And the video surfaced, so they did have that help. But you know, the 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 victim, what's interesting is that the victim in Ray Rice case was one of the people who was immediately trying to stand up for him even after that video was released. In yeah, this case, they have a victim saying, hey, this is exactly what he did. And he even said to me, I'm surprised you're still alive. You know? <laughs> right, right. So, so the, the, for me to then support a narrative of suspicion of domestic violence, there's no damn suspicion. It came straight from the victim's mouth. You right, know? right. This is, this is about the NFL approaching a white player's domestic dispute with way more, um, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna say for lack of a better term, delicate, uh, del I cannot get that out today, fellas, delicacy than they did the Ray Rice situation. They're, they're delicate about it. They're saying, hey, this guy could have a mental illness, which is what caused all of this. And the, it could be an underlying issue here. We're not excusing what he did, but it could be this situation. Where with Ray Rice, it was like, hey, this guy is violent and he doesn't represent the NFL. And we need to separate ourselves from his behavior immediately. And that to me is a black player versus white player situation absolutely absolutely um and to to kind of jump bounce off that um you know yeah it's definitely there's definitely a big racial component with this whole thing um mm -hmm. because the the victim she she said exactly what happened i mean she said she was choked um you know like i said there was pictures on social media of you know her and 
she had like blood in her nose and i mean like you you could tell that that she was abused click like i mean the photos are are online so you know yeah we didn't see him actually do it but you know we we got to believe victims you know we we you know we got to believe we got to believe victims we, you got to believe what they say you know um she said what happened and the fact that you know a whole thing about suspicion and alleged and all this stuff is coming up you know it it just it just kind of how should i say this um it makes me wonder like what if that was a white woman that happened to would would that same level of treatment you know what would that would this whole thing still be a thing where there's suspicion and mm -hmm. the because this is a black woman mm -hmm. and you know if we go on race you know unfortunately the black woman is one of the most unprotected women on the planet unfortunately you know um speak yeah, your and, truth sir <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, the, the black woman, and as Malcolm X said, she's the most disrespected woman on the planet. Maybe that's what I meant more so to say, but either way, you know, as, in terms of, I guess, how people um, value um, women, you know, it just seems like black women are at the bottom of the totem pole, unfortunately, you know. Um, so it, it just makes me think, okay, what if this was a white woman that happened to would it be the same type, you know, whole alleged and suspicion and all this other stuff coming up? You know, I, I, I feel like it would be more like, yeah, you know, that those words probably weren't even, wouldn't even have came into play really. You know, they would have flipped the narrative in, in a different way, but it's a white man on a, on a black woman. Um, so, you know, absolutely, it just makes me Great. think about all that. Yeah, no, I think those are great points, Pat. You're you're spot on as far as I'm concerned because you know at the end of the day, like you said, and and obviously this is coming from a very real and a perspective that for me, um, you know, I feel like I've been articulating and and trying to bring attention to for the last couple of years specifically is that not only does it feel like as a black woman that we are unprotected but as you mentioned pat we are disrespected mm -hmm. we we, yeah. we are unprotected and we are disrespected you know just having the common decency to say let's take this woman who is you know presenting us with photos of her you know beat up face Let's take this woman's word for it when she says this man abused her and said to her, you know, you're still alive. And I, I find it <laughs> very, very difficult to believe that there would ever have been a word like suspicion of domestic violence used had the victim be white. Yeah. It would just be charged with domestic violence. Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 it's it's sad. It's sad, but at the end of the day, I feel like what do we do from here? You know, we're constantly having conversations as a culture. Black people, at least the the, one, the ones that I'm around, the people that I know, we're constantly having the conversations. You know, look how they're treating us. What are we going to do about this? But conversations can only get you but so far uh, the right, yeah. have uh, to actually, make an impact absolutely absolutely it's got to get I mean? into it's got to get into action and um honestly real quick it, you know it, it, it's gonna it, it starts with us as as black people mm -hmm. um when it comes to black women black women need to be protected mm -hmm. flat out like and black men need to be the protectors we need mm -hmm. to protect black women um physically you know in, in terms of the image you know, just we black women need to be protected because the thing is, if 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 we're not protecting black women, then no other man is gonna really, you know, take it upon themselves to want to protect, you know, black women or even think it, you know, they they they're not going to like if, right. if they see that black men, you know, is if they see that we're disrespecting black women and we don't mm -hmm. take them seriously or 
or we, you know, um, devalue them and things of that nature, then they're going to be like, well, why the fuck should we, you know, place value on, on black women if, if your own black men aren't even doing it? So that it, it, I, I agree with you 100 percent. It starts with, it, you, know, you know, action like we, we could talk about this all day. You know, we can, but at the end of the day, it, it's going to start with us. And, um, you know, black men are going to have to step up. We're going to have to step up more. Cause I mean, there are black men, you know, myself included, you know, we do what we can to protect black women, especially, you know, if certain situations arise mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be, but it needs to be more of us. It needs to be Absolutely. like, it needs to be more black men stepping up and saying, look, we, we're going to hold the line. Like, just like other races, other cultures, you know, protect their women. We need to step up and say, we're protecting our women. And that, you know, that's just what I'm going to say to that. Agreed. Agreed. I actually want to touch a little bit on that. Um, Mm -hmm. I always, you know, nothing's never going to change about how divine a Black woman is. I I tell everyone that every day. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I always share this with everyone that the black woman is always the most hurt because trauma is the biggest thing that's hit on the black woman. Mm. And I blame socialism for that and everything. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I tell people, why do we blame socialism is because by a default that we accept things by omission, you know, so if it is cool and it is great, everyone will roll with it if it's not hurting them physically, mentally, or spiritually, you know? Because of that, you know, we have these issues, you know? And like I've said, like, you know, I don't disrespect anybody you know, who chooses the date outside their race. But I will let you know, it's going to be very difficult if you make that decision. So did this woman, this Black woman made that decision? Yes, she did, you know, mm-hmm. which yeah. is facts, you know, you know, because Absolutely. Mm-hmm. and I'm not taking anything what he did. He did something mm-hmm that you could never look back on, you know? Mm-hmm. You know? Now, you know, you know? Now because, you know, Chad Wheeler is, you know, a European white man and whatnot, you know? you know? I can tell everyone like this. I haven't seen many backlash like towards what's been going on with him, you know? He did lose his job, yes, you know? But where's that uprage and that roar that will that we need to seek for, you know? Because yeah, if it was a black back. man, <laughs> if it was a black man and, and that black woman and that would have happened, mm-hmm. man, I feel like the internet would crash literally in hours because it's the sense of us being tired of it. So right. it's like it's like this whole draining of energy like on top of it. Right. And, 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 that's, mm-hmm. and that's and that's my and that's been like my thing, you know. Because I don't, you know, even like, I think Travis Kelsey, he has, you know, a black woman and whatnot. And yet he's a known, you know, European white NFL player and whatnot, you know. So if he would have done this, you know, would they be uproar? Because he is well known, almost like close to a Ray Rice. So like, like, these are the things that, I don't ask myself, but I want to, I, I like to share it with others to feel, you know, what's, you know, really going on. Because many mm-hmm. glorified, you know, black women, you know, you know, who shake their ass on television freely and whatnot, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and if that negative energy is out there and we're allowing this, you know what I'm saying? And we're saying this is okay then it means everything's all right. I feel like as a group, we have to now start saying, this is not okay. And mm-hmm. I've been telling this, I tell this to every single one. It's not okay. You know? like Absolutely. And 
and you can keep saying this, that it's just not okay. Because now it's making me think now, you know, like, man, even though Chad Wheeler lost his job, who knows? Who knows? He might get it back. But the way how it's looking for him, you know, you know, you know, he's not even getting destroyed, blackballed. You know, he's not being called names. He's not calling them a big, but there, there's been nothing threatening that's happened to him at all. You know, so yeah. they made it seem like what he did was okay. Well, he was arrested. He was arrested, okay. but I will, I do understand your point that at the end of the day, the amount of outrage, especially if you compare the story of Ray Rice to this story, is nowhere near equivalent. No, not it, at it, all. Nowhere near equivalent. And and again, that boils down to me to two aspects. One, it's a white man who committed this crime, who is fairly no name in the NFL versus Ray Rice, who was, you know, a, a big enough name that it, it caused a stir. And two, the victim was a black woman. Right. Because, you know, at the end of the day, had she been a white woman, there is no, in my opinion, there is no way that this story would be this docile. Not and, at all. Um, you know, you've both raised some excellent points. So let's let's take it to our final thoughts. The question again, just so you gentlemen know, was given the NFL's history with black players, did they handle this uh, Chad Wheeler so uh, or excuse me issue appropriately? I'm gonna shoot it back to Pat for your final thought. Um, you all, know, real quick, final thought. Um, you know, um, I guess the N. I'll just say, I guess they handled it you know, however they felt was in their best interest to handle it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, as we all have spoke on already, um, you know, if this was a, a black player, you know, of course with the Ray Rice situation, you know, they, that, that was just kind of more of a decisive, more immediate, like, yeah, we don't align with those actions. Like, and you know, that was it. But with, with this particular situation, um, you know, it just goes back to what I said earlier about, you know, um, protecting whiteness. Um, because my thing is to, to throw on a little something there too. Um, let's say Chad Wheeler was black. Let's say he was black and then the woman, his girl was white. Now, if that was a black man that did that to a white woman, I mean, whoo, that, <laughs> the, I mean, yeah, I think the internet would definitely crash. I mean, people would have been all over it. You know, people have been calling for him to be banned. You know, um, it, it, it would, it would, the, the reaction and just everything would have been much different than it is now. And I think, like you said earlier, Naya, to, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's very, the, their action has been, I guess, very docile in, in regards to, to the Chad Wheeler situation. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's pretty much my, my take on, on that. Agreed, agreed. And Mr. E-Man. Um, I'ma just I'ma just leave it at this. You know, in my eyes, the NFL is some shit. You know, <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> you know, I'm 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 you know every 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 situation, you know, it, I, I I can't even say if it even with domestic violence and everything, you know. It, it just keeps boiling down to the same shit every single time. And it just, it just infuriates me. Like, I'm just sitting here like, yo, y'all doing this again? So, you know, you know, I'm not one of these people that cries over spoiled milk because nothing's not spoiled. It's just the simple fact is it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's basically like, you know, you know, it's about, you know, it's business as usual. Let's yep. keep it moving, you yep. know. Absolutely. And, and that that's just my that's just how I'm gonna leave it at. It's just mm -hmm. business as usual for the NFL, and I'm gonna just leave it at that, you know. Yeah, so I can't. very good points, gentlemen, and I totally agree with you both on some aspects of this. I think you know the fact 
that she is a black woman. And I think the fact that he is a white man, uh, particularly a white NFL player definitely played a part here. I'm not saying that the, the guy didn't have underlying mental issues. I don't know that to be true, or I don't know that to be a lie. But what I'm saying is as far as the NFL's approach, I think they approached it honestly as I expected them to. That because mm -hmm. of who was involved, that they, they took a more subtle approach um, I think had this have been a black athlete with a bigger name that it wouldn't have taken that long for that team to release that player. And I think the most important aspect of all of this is what we were speaking on before, which is that, you know, black women need to be protected and, and they need to be protected as Pat said, starting um, and, and more so by are black men more than anyone else. And I think that this young lady has had an obviously very traumatic experience. You know, I wish her the best going forward, but I will say this to wrap up. I, I feel that there's a possibility that she may even return to him. And that's a completely different subject we'll get on in another session. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, from the NFL's perspective, can't say that they handled it appropriately, but they did handle it how I thought they might. So great stuff, folks.